So approximately one year ago, I purchased this little camera. This is a Lytro. Why is this a cool thing? Why would anybody want to buy something that looks like this? That's a great question. The pitch for Lytro's cameras, for the most part, is that they use something called light field technology. I'll get into later what that actually means and what that actually entails, but you can take a picture with this and then focus it after the fact. And if you don't have any experience with cameras, you might think that's like, okay, who cares? That's a big deal. Me, personally, I could use that in my videos myself because I'm not sure if you've noticed, I'll be totally out of focus. And it's because the lens I normally use, you gotta set the, the focus yourself. And if you set it wrong, you're screwed. That's besides the point. This is some incredible technology, right? According to the marketing, and I'll get into that more later, it's like this crazy magical device where you point it at something, it captures the way the light rays are coming into the camera or something, who knows? It's Who knows what's going on inside of it? You load the pictures on your computer, you can refocus it, you can shift the perspective slightly. That's so cool. It, it has an 11 mega ray sensor. What does that mean? 11 mega rays sounds like 11 megapixels, but in fact it's not. The pictures you get out of this thing are one megapixel. I shot some video in 8K the other day, and that's like, I don't know, like 40 or 30 megapixels. One megapixel is barely even viewable. If you watch this video in its native 5K, this is the size of a one megapixel picture. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Incredible. This is the lens, right? Pretty obvious. This is the screen. It's very hard to operate. You're holding this thing, you're trying to figure out what you're looking at, and then at the same time, you know, oh, you wanna go this way? No, there's a menu. <laughs> it's very difficult to use. The reason it's so large is because it actually has optical zoom. There's a, a system of lenses in here. You kind of like rub it up here. <laughs> It's very interesting. It works okay. Like, it's surprisingly sensitive. And it's great because normally when I sit somewhere, like, rubbing my camera, it doesn't do anything. My precious. See, it doesn't zoom when I do that, so I'm glad they implemented this feature. You, you zoom on something, took it, takes a picture, you're all set, right? Throw it over to your computer. You open up the very outdated software because this is from 2013, like I said, but you can refocus it. That's really incredible. That's something that's super interesting. A year ago, when I first got this camera, I was sitting there messing around with it. Overall, I was very impressed. I thought, you know, the build quality in general is very, very good. I had taken a picture of something and it was out of focus. And I'm like, this is gonna be incredible. I'm so excited to go in and refocus. This is what this is meant for. And the picture wouldn't change focus. It, it doesn't, it, it was permanently out of focus. Very confused by that because based on the marketing, the things people kind of, the way they talked about it, I was under the impression it was like capturing the way light rays are in the, doesn't make any sense. It's not a magical black box. Light field technology, what is it? Basically, it's a normal camera sensor. And what they have done is over the camera sensor, they have a bunch of these little tiny lenses. I kind of imagine like a compound lens type thing. Each of these lenses allows the camera to get multiple perspectives in a single picture. From these tiny little lenses, it's able to combine into a single shot. And that's the reason, of course, why this thing is, is 11 mega rays, right? Because it does have an 11 megapixel sensor in there. And the Lytro Illum has a 40 megapixel sensor. You end up getting in the final picture, you know, like one megapixel or like only a couple megapixels. With all the extra information, you're able to basically estimate a depth map. With a depth map, you can do a lot of stuff. For example, you can add a blur effect. You can kind of animate stuff slightly. All you need is a phone that has two cameras and you can estimate a depth map pretty accurately. In fact, modern phones, like my beautiful 8K phone camera right here, I'm gonna do a video about this. It has a, what's called a time of flight sensor, specifically designed to estimate depth in a scene. What's so disappointing about this is based on how it was sold to me. I got this impression that it was like some sort of crazy 3D scan, like you're clicking this button. Yeah, it's low resolution, but you're like capturing the 3D scene. It's basically 
just an overhyped version of portrait mode from your phone, right? But it's probably better than portrait mode on your phone, right? I'm not so sure. If you go out and you use this camera or more likely the Illum, which you can actually get like usable photos from, you're gonna notice that these depth maps that it estimates, they're not fantastic, especially with like small details. Plants is a great example. It has trouble like picking out the exact little details and that's a big issue. You're sacrificing a crazy amount, right? For the privilege of being able to calculate a depth map that isn't always correct. On this thing and on, on the Illum, there's no aperture priority. You can tell your camera, listen, I want the lens to be wide open. You control all the other settings to make sure the image looks good. I don't care about any of the other settings. Make sure the aperture is wide open. Because it's like some sort of crazy fancy light field technology, you don't need to worry about the aperture, right? Because it's capturing the light rays. You can change the aperture in post, it doesn't matter. ISO, you can't change. So that's why they have ISO priority instead of aperture priority. And I was like dumbfounded by that. I thought that's really incredible. But in reality, <laughs> you're not changing the aperture. You're just adding a blur effect to, to the picture. Maybe I'm being a little bit too aggressive here, but in the software, you can manually modify the depth map, which is a nice feature that's better than not having it at all. But you're sacrificing all this resolution just to be able to estimate the depth map. And, and then you're like, you're still going in having to manually modify it after the fact. There's the ability to change perspective of your photo in post. I was hoping because of the way light field technology works, being able to capture multiple perspectives in a single picture. I was hoping it would use those actual different perspectives when, when you go in and like mess around with this perspective. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but I don't think it is. If anything, to me at least, it looks like it's just displacing the photo based on the depth map, which like I said, is not a new thing. In fact, my phone here has this exact feature and it has no light field technology involved. Check this out. I just took a picture of my camera and it has this really cool like 3D effect. It's actually pretty effective if you look at it there. The saving grace of this camera is the fact that it is actually capturing different perspectives. But my assumption is either Lightro didn't know a way to apply those different perspectives effectively, or maybe it's just like the perspective change is so subtle that it wouldn't make a, a visible difference. This came out in 2012. The oldest digital camera I have and still use, actually the only point and shoot I use is this Canon G7. It came out in 2006. It's built like a tank. It's like solid aluminum, has an optical viewfinder. Get a load of that. I mean, come on. Manual controls. I've mentioned this thing before because it was super cheap. It still works great 15 years later. Is that, was 2006 really 15 years ago? I don't remember what 2006 was like because I was five, but still, I still use this to actively get usable pictures, 10 megapixels, 10 times the output of this thing. I think it's pretty clear this was kind of more of a technological demonstration based on its design. I mean, look at it. I don't know what it looks like even. It looks like the thing from Interstellar. Design-wise, this is not designed to be used because it's this screen on this. There's like no proper way to hold it. The Lightyear Illum, the second camera they made, is probably one of the most beautiful cameras I have ever seen. It is a gorgeous camera. And that's the thing that makes me sad when this company shut down because the design on this may not be effective. It's very interesting. It's very pretty. The lens cap is magnetic. It's 2021, every lens cap on every camera should be magnetic. I mean, there's no reason, like this is fantastic. Whoa, what's that line? I had no idea. Oh, that looks bizarre. I'll just show pictures then. The Illum is a beautiful camera. It's got this big lens and I would kill for Blackmagic or Panasonic if their design team would take some notes from them. That reminds me, I think I actually have a Blackmagic, oh, right here. This is a Blackmagic 4K. It's a nice camera, dude. It's a really nice camera. But design-wise, I gotta say, it doesn't look as nice as the Lytro, you know? Maybe that's a controversial statement, but... Even with cinema cameras, though, like the Blackmagic, once you're focused, that's it.
And if you can tell, there's no autofocus on this thing, continuous autofocus. There's a lot of places you can apply Lytro technology where it would make a lot of sense. But considering the whole thing is just a way to calculate a depth map, you know, I think that probably is why they went out of business like they did. I'm going back. At least they got something right. But when you have a product that you give to somebody and they're like, oh, well, it's very pretty. That's not ideal, right? You know, I guess what you're gonna do. Big, big shout out to my Patreon, Patreon peoples. I'm talking with y'all in the group chat all the time. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and I also appreciate those of you who watched this far and watched the video in the beginning. I think on average, the attention span for people watching my videos is like two minutes <laughs> or something like that. So you 